Number 8. Little Nicky The concept of cloning animals has been around for a very long time, but the concept of cloning animals to sell as pets hasn't been around too long. And the very first case of this came forth in 2004 by a cat called Little Nicky. This all started with a California-based company, Genetic Savings and Clone. Yes, that really is the name of the company, where they were the first company to successfully clone a cat. They did it in conjunction with Texas A&M University, and the cat, Cece, was truly the first cloned cat of its kind. Upon hearing about this success in 2004, a Texas woman named Julie, her last name was not given for various reasons, decided that she wanted to clone her cat. Why? Because she just lost her own cat named Nikki, who was 17 years old at its passing. She paid $50,000 to have the DNA of her moon cat used to get a clone, and sure enough, the process was successful, and little Nikki was born. While Julie was happy to have her cat back, even noting that there were no differences between the two, including looks and personality, other people weren't so thrilled. Many animal rights groups protested cloning of the cat, not just for ethical reasons. Cloning is a bit of a gray area when it comes to the rights and life of other philosophical debates. Before the fact that there are shelters all over the world that put down animals because no one wants them. So instead of spending $50,000 on a cloned cat that admittedly had health issues throughout its life, she should have spent that money on animals that honestly could have used her help. Genetic Savings and Clone would later close in 2006. Number 7. Stag Beetle To many, the idea of paying a lot of money for a bug is a bit out there because bugs are everywhere and they are annoying in numerous ways. But just like with other creatures, there are ones that are very rare and special. And depending on the area of the world you are in, they can be quite valuable to the right collector. A great example of this is in Japan with the stag beetle. Believe it or not, in the nation of Japan, the stag beetle is their most prized insect, especially if you can find one of a giant size, meaning a couple of inches, because they don't get to be that size very often. As for why they are kept, they and other insects are seen not just as great pets, in which crickets and fireflies are very common Japanese pets as well, but their sounds are seen as a very soothing reminder of nature. Going back to the stag beetle, a three-inch one was found and sold to the president of a company back in 1999 for a staggering $90,500. For the record, the base price of a regular-sized beetle in Japan at the time was about $4.50. As such, for it to go from that price to this one shows just how valuable it was to this man. In fact, not only did he buy it, he refused to give his name and address because he was convinced that he was going to be robbed of the bug. Another irony is that this price for a stag beetle in Japan will never be beaten for a very simple reason. In 1999, breeding beetles like these and getting a large size wasn't done. But now, breeders have figured out how to do it you can now get a very large stag beetle for a very small fraction of the price that this man paid. Number 6. Sir Lancelot Encore I want you to take a look at Sir Lancelot Encore. Does anything look weird about this canine? No? Nothing? What if I told you that the reason this dog is called Sir Lancelot Encore is because he's a clown? Here's the deal. There used to be a world-famous dog called Sir Lancelot. He was owned by the Otto family in Florida, and he was very precious to them. So much so, in fact, that when he died in 2008 of cancer, they decided to not suffer through the grief of the loss and took his DNA to be cloned. As a result of a successful procedure, Sir Lancelot Encore was born, and this guy is actually the world's first successfully cloned dog, which makes him not just pretty special, but also pretty valuable if you really think about it. Now, the price of Lancey, as he's called now, is a bit varied depending on who you talk to. But it seems that the Otto family spent $155,000 to make this procedure happen. And to their credit, it worked. And this dog is world famous, just like his father. There are two catches to this story that need to be noted. First and foremost, the company that was hired to do this wasn't just from South Korea, who have less lenient laws against this kind of thing than the United States, but they weren't contacted by the Otto family to clone their dog. The company was holding an auction to see who would get the chance to try and have a cloned animal. The Otto family won the bid. The other catch is that Sir Lancelot Encore wasn't their only animal. They had nine other dogs, 10 cats, four birds, and six sheep, making you wonder if they really needed to spend that amount of money for the cloned dog 
when they had plenty of other animals to keep them company. Number 5. Devron Bale Perfection There are many reasons to want a certain kind of animal, but one you might not think about in the grand scale of things is the stud factor, if you will. Meaning that certain animals are bred with such a thoroughbred lineage that they'll be sold to the people temporarily so that their own animals of the same species can make with them and thus get more of a pure offspring from the females. A great example of this is the ram known as Devron Vale Perfection. Devron Vale Perfection was made by embryo transfer breeding techniques, and it was a very lean meat sheep, as they say. In 2009, he was sold for over $250,000. But in truth, the real value of him is in the stud fees that he gets from having people buy him so that he can breed with other sheep. For example, a previous sheep that sold highly for that reason cost almost $150,000 but raked in over a million dollars in stud fees. John Yates of the Texel Sheep Society said, The staggering amount paid for Deverendale perfection surprised many. A lot of people see these animals as lamb chops, but these flocks are at the top of the genetic pile. This was the elite animal that stood out. The person who bought the ram, Jimmy Douglas, was very happy with his purchase and noted that it was a very much a live at first sight situation. There was a photo of him and the Scottish farmer. I had to have him. Number 4. Armando In the United States of America, the bird species known as pigeons are not revered. In fact, they are hated by a great many people, even being with the nickname rats with wings. Even going so far as to eliminate an entire species of pigeons that numbered in the billions. But in China, pigeons are valued for a very simple reason. They can be bred to be racing pigeons, and that can make them a lot of money. Enter Armando, a racing pigeon that is at the top of his class thanks to breeding and training. He was sold in 2019 to a Chinese businessman for a whopping $1.4 million. Not just so Armando could be raced with, but so that his genes could pass to the next generation of racing pigeons in the country. Believe it or not, these kinds of high purchases happen for pigeons all the time because of the competition level in the country. They're willing to spend top dollar for the birds that they know aren't regular tier. You can compare it to artwork. A painting made by Picasso is worth more than one made by an unknown artist. It's the same with this pigeon. Number 3. Big Splash Dog breeding to many is an art form, and because of that, it can lead to all sorts of dogs being sold for various reasons and for various prices. But when it comes to the breed known as the Tibetan Mastiff, it's a bit of a different story. You see, these dogs are very rare, mainly because, as their name suggests, they aren't seen very often outside of Tibet. So to have one in the country outside of it makes it rare and valuable. In China, they actually view the Tibetan Mastiff as a status symbol because of their rarity. And to that end, a coal baron from China went and bought a Tibetan Mastiff named Big Splash for a whopping $1.5 million. According to the seller of the dog, Big Splash was a perfect specimen and could have been used for various purposes by the owner, including one being leased out for stud fees. However, the owner decided to take the status symbol approach. Big Splash was taken care of in every way, treated like royalty, and untold amounts of cash was spent to make sure he was happy and healthy at all times. Number 2. America No, not the country. America happens to be the name of a prized bull that was sold in 2018 during an auction. What made this bull so special? That would be because he was a very rare, specially bred bull, not unlike many other species. He was bred to be as close to pure and perfect as possible, and thus would be perfect for breeding, not eating as many would suspect. The reason for this is the long game versus the short game. Yes, you could eat this prized Angus bull and get some really good meat, but then it would be over. In contrast, if you had him mate with many other cows and they had children that grew up to be like America, the bull, and had similarly great meat and offspring, then you could set yourself up for a very lucrative time on your farm. Many people felt this way, and thus America was sold for $1.51 million, and he was used specifically for his stud fees that would be many tens of thousands of dollars, according to estimates. Number 1. Fusaichi Pegasus Horse breeding is one of the oldest trades in the world, and through this, we have gotten many unique, powerful, and pure breeds of horses throughout the world from Arabian to the Clydesdale. In regards to the most expensive horse ever purchased, that would be the Fusaichi Pegasus. He was the winner of the 2000 Kentucky Derby, one of the Triple Crown races held in America, and winning one of them can put you in line not just for glory, but a lot of money by sale of the horse and stud fees. 
While the exact number put on Fusaichi Pegasus after being sold is unknown, it's believed to have been in the range of about 60 to 70 million. At its peak after sale, its stud fees were about $200,000 and that pay didn't go to waste as he helped sire many winning racehorses over the years. But as new contenders rose up, his price per fee went down, showing that you shouldn't put all your money on one horse. Number 8. Oarfish The depths of the ocean hide many wonders, and one of those wonders is the oarfish. This is a large fish. In fact, the largest one found was 36 feet long. Yet when it was found on the beach, many people thought it was a hoax mainly because it was too big or too monstrous to be real. Then, when it was proven to be real, they believed that this was the inspiration for the legends of sea serpents and sea dragons, which is possible because they can be found in places like China, and it's possible they are in other areas. But since the oarfish prefers to live at massive depths, they're not seen too often on the surface, so it's hard to track them. In fact, some scientists believe that they live at nearly 3,000 feet below sea level, the few times we do see them is when they wash up dead on the shore after dying like many other sea creatures in the past. This is due in part to their muscle structure. They're used to stiller waters at deeper depths, not the currents and tides near the surface. So if it reaches the surface, it's often dead or on the brink of death because its body is being battered by the waters. Adding to their mystery, they've rarely, if ever, been caught on video. One such time was the show River Monsters, which was the first time in history it was ever caught on film. Number 7. Blobfish The blobfish is actually a very unique specimen when it comes to the world we live in. For you see, the blobfish are a species that lives in incredibly deep waters within the oceans, and they're used to living in places with incredible pressure. So when they're not in those high-pressure areas, they actually transform, in a way, into a more jelly-like state which is why it looks like a blob when it's on the surface. Yep, that's right. The form you're seeing now is not its true form, but rather its final form. Just catching a blobfish is an incredible endeavor, so no blobfish has ever been caught alive, which is the same for most deep sea fish. So even if you could catch one, you'd have to keep it within a container that exerts the same pressure of the deep ocean and then transfer it into a cage that has similar pressures. The blobfish is just one of many mysteries about the deeper parts of the ocean, as its transformation isn't something that many other aquatic species have to worry about. And just as important, with this creature having such a life beneath the ocean's depths and intense pressures, it adds to the mystery of what other sea monsters might just be out there waiting to be discovered by those able to reach them. Number 6. Mermaids Mermaids are creatures that are half fish, half woman in most versions and they've had a large variety of personalities and skills depending on which story and legend you believe. The first accounts of mermaids come from the Assyria culture, where one of their goddesses took the form of a mermaid in order to punish herself for accidentally killing her lover. Many versions of them have been made since. The irony, of course, is that there are many who believe that mermaids actually exist. Sightings of mermaids go back to Christopher Columbus and even before him and continue to appear today. But despite what you might think, there are stories of mermaids having washed up on shore. In 1830, the town of Benbecula were enjoying their time on the nearby beach. Suddenly, a woman saw something odd in the water. It was a miniature woman, which is what the Scots believe are the size of mermaids. The woman alerted her fellow townspeople and they tried to capture the mermaid but failed. In the process though, some boys were able to throw rocks at it, and some of them hit it. A couple of days later, the mermaid actually washed up on shore, dead. She had a scaleless fishtail and was like the legends depicted her to be. After realizing what they had done, the town sheriff declared that they would give the mermaid a proper burial. And they did so, and they actually buried her on the beach itself. Here's the rub. Even though the story has been told for generations, no one can find the grave. Number 5. Squids While we all know about squids in the ocean and how large they can get, between 60 and 80 feet long at max depending on who you believe and what species you're looking at, it was a very long time before we ever truly observed a squid, and the first true observation that happened was because of the fact that it started to wash up on the beaches. Much like whales, there are a lot of mysteries around how squids end up on beaches, 
mainly because most of them live hundreds, if not thousands, if not tens of thousands of feet below sea level. So when they die, they honestly shouldn't make it to the surface without help, but they do. The common theory is that the ones that died and ended up on the beaches of the world were the ones that were already pretty close to the surface to start off with. Hence, there wasn't much of an issue getting caught in the right tide or current and bringing them ashore. Regardless of how, the discoveries of squids on beaches helped lead to all sorts of discoveries about the species, and for that, we should be grateful. Scientists are certainly grateful, for even though we don't know everything about giant squids and similar squids of equal size, we are learning. If you're curious, squid beaching still happens to this day. Number 4. Murray Wai Monster In 2016, a man was walking down the beach of the Murray Wai in Auckland, New Zealand when he found something he didn't expect. A massive creature looking at him from on the beach itself, or so he felt. The creature was massive and appeared to be nothing short of a monster, which the locals would soon dub the Murray Wai Monster. But as scientists went towards the monster and started to research it, they found a much more simple explanation for what it was driftwood. And not just wood, obviously, but a large piece of wood that was covered in gooseneck barnacles. If you're curious about why there were so many of these barnacles on this piece of wood, that's because this particular species of them, known as Lepus anifera, is a barnacle that lives via attaching itself to objects underwater. They do this in massive colonies and then eat by using the tubes that their bodies have to filter feed. The tubes are known as pendunculus, and they can grow up to 31 inches long, which was part of the reason why people felt the barnacle colony was a monster because of all the tendrils wiggling around. The irony of the situation is that the massive piece of driftwood only washed up on the beach because there was an earthquake in the area that put it there. Number 3. Mystery Skull At a place called Mystery Bay in South Wales, Australia, locals found what they dubbed was a skull that washed up on the beach in 2017 after some heavy storms in the area. The thing that caught the eyes of most who saw it was not its shape, but rather its composition, as the skull was not hard, but actually gelatinous. This raised all sorts of questions as to what it was and what creature might possess such a skull. Fisherman Jason Moyce was one of the first to comment that the skull was likely something from a shark or a ray, though what species exactly he couldn't tell. The size of the skull wasn't helping either, as it was 25 centimeters long and 25 centimeters wide. Many sharks and rays can have skulls that size at one point in their life or another. Eventually, many scientists got involved in the discussion of what it was and what it belonged to, leading to the conclusion that it was the skull, or at least part of the skull, of a large ray. Though as to what exact species of ray, the answer is unclear. Number 2. Sea Monster of New Zealand On a New Zealand beach known as the Bay of Plenty in 2013, a carcass of a sea monster appeared. Many believed that it was a sea monster due to the fact that it was very scary in appearance, thanks to its decomposed state, as well as its massive teeth that were revealed to everyone who looked at it. What's more, the creature was 30 feet in length, and there are only a few sets of aquatic life that could grow to that length that we know of. Focusing on the teeth, there were over a dozen very long and very sharp teeth in the mouth which seemed to point to this creature being a powerful predator of some type, further throwing fuel for the sea monster theory that many believed. Eventually, the mystery of the creature's identity was revealed by a marine mammal expert, Anton Van Helden, who after examining the fin of the decomposed creature, revealed that it was just a killer whale. This lines up with the size factor as killer whales are on average about 26 feet in length, but have been known to grow larger at times. What's more, the killer whale has very sharp teeth as they use them to hunt things like seals and have even been known to take bites out of sharks. The only mystery that wasn't solved was how the killer whale washed up onto the beach. Number 1. The Philippines Hair Bob In 2018, a white creature appeared on the beach in the Philippines. The problem for many was that no one could really identify what exactly this creature was, not the least of which was because of its blob shape and the fact that it was covered in hair. Also, the globster, as it was called by the locals, was over 20 feet long. This not only appeared weird to many in the area, but many locals perceived this as a bad sign of things to come. It has been told that when creatures from the deepest parts of the ocean start appearing, something bad will happen, Vincent de la Pina Badillo told The Sun on Sunday. Samples of the creature were sent to a lab for identification. Believe it or not, this is not the first globster to arrive in the Philippines, and in fact, they have been spotted all over the world, including in Russia and the United States. So is this a string of monsters surfacing after a long life? Not exactly. Though some have been never fully identified, Others have been confirmed to be decomposed whales, 
squids, and other deep-sea creatures. As for the hair of the creatures that people love to talk about, those are the remains of muscle and fiber tissue that is within them. It will be curious to see if more creatures like the guapster surface again. Number 9. Kirayam's Mermaids You might think that most mermaid sightings came from a long time ago, during the ages where people didn't know much about the denizens of the deep. But in fact, some of these mermaid sightings are actually very recent. For example, let's travel back over 10 years to 2009, when Kirayam's Israel, a sighting of a mermaid on a beach, started a citywide hunt for the creature. This all started when one of the people in the city went to the beach and saw a mermaid. Apparently, she was sunbathing. They said, I was with friends when suddenly we saw a woman laying on the sand in a strange way. At first, I thought she was just another sunbather, but when we approached, she jumped into the water and disappeared. We were all in shock because we saw she had a tail. Upon being spotted, the mermaid went into the waters and out of sight, just as you would expect it to after being discovered. However, the sightings didn't stop there. In fact, they just started. More and more locals came to the spot and around dusk, the mermaid would occasionally appear, helping fuel the mermaid fever. It's hard to blame them, seeing a sight like that and wondering if their eyes were playing tricks on them or something of the like. It would be special for sure, and you'd want to see it again just to prove it to yourself and others. The fever to find the mermaid slash mermaids got so crazy that the town council of Kiryat Yams, Israel, offered a million dollar reward to anyone who could get definitive proof the mermaid existed. Sadly, and somewhat obviously, no proof was ever found and the legend continues. Still, if the mermaid was fake, why did so many people think that they saw her? Number 8. Columbus Saw Mermaids Depending on who you believe, the legends of mermaids were started by fishermen and sailors. Which brings us to one of the most famous cases of mermaid spotting, and it was done by none other than Christopher Columbus. That's right, the famous and infamous explorer documented a sighting of mermaids off the coast of the Caribbean. But hold on, there's a catch here. Most legends state that mermaids are rather beautiful, but the ones that Columbus saw was anything but. In fact, they were mannish in quality. At the coast of Hispaniola, I saw three sirens, which rose well out of the sea, but they were not so beautiful as they are said to be, for their faces had some masculine traits. The Admiral says that he had seen some at other times off the coast of Guinea. Now some may question whether Columbus really saw anything, but then that would raise the question of why he documented anything at all. He had nothing to gain from it, so why lie? Another explanation that is more plausible is that he saw certain sea creatures, mainly manatees and dugongs, possibly covered in seaweed to make it look like they had hair. Yet another question is now raised. How did Columbus not notice he was looking at sea creatures? Some say that Columbus wouldn't have been hasty to misidentify something, but whether this is the case or not, no one really knows. Number 7. The Main Mermaid This is another tale of a town that was turned upside down because of a mermaid sighting, which happened in British Columbia, Canada specifically near Main Island. It all started when a ferry was working its way around the island when suddenly the passengers were all looking at the shoreline. Why? Because it appeared that a topless blonde woman was there, but as they looked closer, they believed that the woman was eating a raw salmon. What's more, when they looked at her legs, she had a tail of a dolphin or a porpoise. The sightings didn't stop there though. The next week, another group of passengers on the same ferry saw the mermaid again. Naturally, this got the town into a fever, as they wanted desperately to know if the mermaid was real or a play on their imaginations. The town paper, known as The Colonist, put up a $25,000 reward for the mermaid's capture. It was 1967 when this happened. Funnily enough, after the capture of the mermaid, the townspeople were actually going to have her live in the town itself which is rather kind of them when you think about it on a grand scale. Sadly, she was never caught, and many feel that this was a ploy for tourism and attention. But if that was the case, why the reports of her eating salmon raw? Number 6. Zimbabwe Mermaids In 2012, in Zimbabwe, a dam was being built by some local workers. Very normal state of affairs on the whole. It was until a mermaid showed up and started to harass the workers. No, seriously. These particular mermaids were called Mamba Muntu, and once they arrived, the workers fled. 
Why? Because in Zimbabwe, the legend, the Mamba Muntu, are a bad omen, and you don't mess with those because of what they can bring if you tempt fate. So what was the country to do? Well, a local council hired some non-locals to finish the work. In their minds, this was a case of superstition leading on to illogical conclusions. Foreigners wouldn't have that, but then the new workers fled as well, citing that the mermaid was there and she was very mad at them. Fed up with this, the council then ordered that rituals be held at the dams in order to cleanse the area and allow construction to continue. Nothing happened after that. So what was the Mambu Muntu? Was it really a mermaid or something else? Number 5. The Cayman In this story, we're going to South Africa, where a legend grew in 2008 in the form of a Cayman, which is their form of the mermaid. A group of friends in the country were going on a camping trip, and they set up a camp near the river. One day, though, they heard noises coming from the river, ones that didn't make sense for fish or other aquatic animals of the river. They went to investigate and they eventually saw a woman in the river. But something was off with this woman. Her skin seemed to glow, and when she turned around to face the group, her eyes were red, like all red. It was also noted that she gave a sorrowful cry when spotted. After a while, the caiman went back into the water and hasn't been there since. In the lore, caiman aren't the nicest of creatures. They'll actually lure you into the water and then drag you down into the depths, giving you objects that you desire. Needless to say, the sightings got a lot of attention, and a lot of people in South Africa are wondering if their legend just truly came to life. Number 4. Death of a Mermaid When you think of Scotland, you likely go towards the legend of another mythical creature known as the Loch Ness Monster. But in fact, the country has one of the most interesting mermaid tales you'll ever hear. In 1830, the town of Benbecula were enjoying their time on the nearby beach. Suddenly, a woman saw something odd in the water. It was a miniature woman, which is what Scots believe are the size of mermaids. The woman alerted her fellow townspeople, and they tried to capture the mermaid, but failed. In the process, though, some boys were able to throw rocks at it, and some of them hit it. A couple of days later, the mermaid actually washed up on shore, dead. She had a scaleless fish tail and was like the legends depicted her to be. After realizing what they had done, the town sheriff declared that they would give the mermaid a proper burial, and they did so, and they actually buried her on the beach itself. Here's the rub. Even though the story has been told for generations, no one can find the grave. That's not to say it didn't happen, but if no one can find it, you have to wonder if it happened at all. Number 3. Orang Ikan In World War II, around 1943, Japan was fortifying itself in the region of the Indian Ocean and they had even set up a base in the Kai Islands of Indonesia. Specifically, they put a surveillance group there to monitor things going on in the islands. Sure enough, they started to see things, but not regular things, weird things. One instance saw them viewing a humanoid creature emerging from the water, but when they looked closer, it had spines on its neck and its mouth was that of a carp. The creature was continually seen on the waters of the island, and the more it popped up, the more the surveillance team was desperate to figure out what was going on. Eventually, the people of the Kai Islands revealed that the creature was an orang ikan, or a human fish, and one day they actually invited one of the soldiers named Taro Horiba to come to their village. When he did, he was shown to capture the creature. So why isn't the orang ikan a documented part of the world? Well, Horiba decided to bring the zoologist to the village to check out the creature, but no one believed him. So for all we know, there's a human fish swimming around in Indonesia. Number 2. Mystery in New Zealand a mermaid might have been found in New Zealand in 2014, and this event is causing a stir even to this day. So what happened? A group of fishermen were doing their jobs when suddenly they came across a skeleton. Rightfully concerned, they went to deliver the body, thinking that they found the victim of a crime. But as they looked closer at the skeleton, something didn't add up. Because while parts of it looked human, the rest didn't. The South Island, where the skeleton was found, went crazy with news and wonder about what exactly was found. It was clear to some that the skeleton resembled one who had aquatic features, like a mermaid, but without seeing the body in its prime form, all they could do was speculate. When the authorities couldn't unravel the mystery, the University of Auckland was brought in to help sort everything out. They're still researching what it could be. Number 1. Hudson Sight On the Bering Sea, the one in Norway, not near Alaska. In 1608, a man named Henry Hudson was doing some sailing and exploring 
when all of a sudden a mermaid popped up next to his ship. She apparently saw him and the rest of his crew and actually called up some of her fellow mermaids to gaze upon them. He wrote down in his journal just how they looked and it lines up with how the mermaids of many cultures have been described. Now you might be thinking, isn't this the same thing that happened to Columbus? Did they see manatees? That would be a logical assumption. However, there are no manatees in that area at all. What's more, many have argued that Hudson wouldn't have mistaken animals for women, given his experience on the sea. So the question remains, did he actually see mermaids or was there something else going on? Regardless, the legend of the mermaid persists, and it's not dying anytime soon. Thanks for watching. What did you think of the sightings from people that claim to have seen real mermaids? Do you think that any of them could actually be real? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!